welcome back to me playing Dark Souls. Last time, we've killed the Moonlight Butterfly and Havel, or whoever that is. And this time around, my cables are crossing around here, so I have to... Okay, there we go. This time around, you might notice that I am undead. Again, hollowing. What the hell happened? Well, let's just say... Oh, good lord. Uh, let's just say that I started recording, and as I go out here, I was distracted by the mouse on the screen, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I fell. But this is actually fortuitous because when we go to the depths, uh, that is actually an area filled up with invasion chances, and therefore we want to keep the invasions to a minimum. I don't know if there is actually a way to play this offline. There might be. Also, there should be a way to see infinity through here, but I don't find it right now. By the way, that that down there is Firelink. If you if you're asking yourself, that is Firelink. But as you can see, uh, there is no aqueduct. That is a, probably a visual bug. Either way, <clears throat> or probably the aqueduct doesn't have a uh, model on the other side. No, it definitely does have a model, because you can see the aqueduct. See? That's what I told you. You're worried about that guy? He is not gonna pass through you. <laughs> uh, there we go. Also, I was pointing out at the screen. You can take this shortcut here. For the meager amount of damage that you take, it's not that much of a big deal anyway. Down here you're gonna meet dogs. These dogs are the most easily killed with thrusting attacks. They'll be dodging most of your attacks, but thrusting attacks uh, tend to be quite easy to hit them. But still, they're quite pesky. They actually uh, um, trigger the bleed buildup to start. So be careful about that. Down here. Somebody. Oh. Anybody. Help me. Unlock the door. Damn. I'm finished. How did this ever happen? Oh, you're an idiot. That's how it happened. Hello. Brilliant. You opened the door for me. Thank you. I'm saved. I thought I might never escape. I am Griggs of Vinheim, the sorcerer of the school. I am much obliged for your assistance. Thanks to you, I may now resume my travels. All right. Oh, hello. I'm fine. <coughs> I will rest a while, then return to Firelink Shrine. All right. I have my sorcery, and I will be more cautious next time. Yeah, so I would hope so. Important task at hand. All right. I'll see you there then. Let's free up this corpse, and he's gonna... Oh, no, no, I didn't wanna... I don't wanna talk to you! I wanna loot the corpse! There we go. Sorcerer rat! So, he had a partner here, who was trapped and killed inside a barrel. Makes you think. Okay, down here, this is actually a very tricky part. You have the hollow, hollow torch people. These guys can murder the ass out of you, so... Do not underestimate just because they have the weak looking body. Those torches have a deadly, deadly, deadly moveset. That one being the one move that makes it so deadly. They can attack you like six or seven times with their torches and they do a lot of damage. S probably even kill you instantly, so always be careful with these guys. Try to also use thrusting attacks like I do. They're useful. Okay, I risked there a bit, but managed to get Twin Humanities! Alright. So we're still in the Undead Burg, right over here. It doesn't have any difference in names, it's just the Undead Burg. We were up there before. Uh, can we actually recognize the places? Um, yeah, that's where the guys that toss the firebombs are at. The plank up above. Or rather the platform, rather than planks. The platform is built up of more planks, right? So, there are three doors. One, two, and one down there. Three. By the way, this is an auxiliary power of uh, holy powers. Like, the effect of uh, divine, or rather fate spells, is increased near these. Only one use, though. This is actually an ambush, which you can easily dispatch by using the great game mechanics of clipping through doors 
to taken care of and the doors will automatically open up despite not having anyone behind them and here is a third thief a hollow feed these guys when are then they are in this pose they're gonna try to uh, repose you their repose is not as deadly as the uh, a boulder knight repose, by the way, so don't be afraid if you get into the repose animation. They just hop you, slice your throat, you'll be fine. Which is kind of ridiculous to say it right now, and at, in that way anyway. Down the road, uh, we're going to uh, be in another bigger scale ambush, but it's nothing to worry about. You must be careful, there are two dogs down there, which can gr draw aggro. You wanna try and not draw aggro if at all possible, but it's pretty doable at the end of the day. Okay, I'm still alive. I need to be careful with my hit points when I'm talking. Sometimes I don't look at my health, so that's something. Also, these also these guys also cause uh, po uh, not poison, but bleed buildup. Uh, which can be quite pesky, but not too deadly at this point of the game. I mean, it does like, what, 30 or 40% of your total health damage. So if you're at a certain point of your life, it might instantly kill you, by the way, but, you know. At this point of the game, you might re- Oh god, I forgot there is a second dog. Taken care of. There's two dogs. There's two dogs in front of the boss fog gate. <coughs> I apologize. Uh, I'm gonna drink Nastus here. We're not gonna go fight the boss quite yet. I wanna open a shortcut first. A very important shortcut. Ambush there. Easy guy to kill here. And off you go. Uh, there is loot down there, but we're gonna go later on after the boss. So it doesn't really matter. Archer. Not the hardest target to kill at this point of the game and just around the corner here is a very important merchant Right, she is a undead merchant, which is going to sell blood red, purple, and blooming purple moss clumps at an infinite state. Their cost is a bit prohibitable at this point of the game, but you know, it's useful. She also sells the very useful poison throwing knife, but most importantly, the dung pies. Alarming skulls, charcoal pie and resin. She has an infinite stock of this. We're gonna buy. Uh, Let's buy three of them. Transient Curses, uh, she has a couple of these, maybe two or three. Rotten Pine Resin, which adds poison effect to right hand weapon. Not very useful against PvE, by the way, all of this. Homeward Bone, this is the most important part. She sells Homeward Bones aplenty. We're gonna buy four of these. Prism Stones, she sells infinite of these. Might as well buy them. I mean, it costs only 1000 souls. Some Humanity, Purging Stones, and. Uh, Poison arrows, which are really, really important and good. Also, some stock, some nice stock of arrows and bolts if you are interested in that. So she's a bit crazy. I'll say goodbye to her. 
So she's a bit crazy, but, you know, she keeps her sanity by gathering moss. And she likes moss, she likes humidity, she likes water, she likes iron bars. So, you know, whatever. I don't know if she's killable, I never tried to kill her, to be completely honest. I wouldn't even want to kill her. Now, we might be approaching a place you might know. And I might die here again. Yuppers, we're in Firelink again. Beautiful, beautiful Firelink Shrine. Hello! This time around I have a Claymore. That's the difference. Uh, we're not gonna plunge that guy, there is a reason to fall down, down, down into death. So what we're gonna do is... See you later! There we go. Dealt with him the way you should be dealing with him. Next. There we go. And finally, this guy. I just love the roll attack, by the way. The sprint attack of the Claymore is so good. Like, you can just approach an enemy and do it. And it's really, really useful in some situation if you don't lock into an enemy. We're gonna rest here. We're gonna have 10 Estes Flask. I believe there is no other business we can do here. Uh, we could level up our attunement so we have the first attunement slot. We might need it sooner or later anyway, so that's good news. <clears throat> I apologize. Uh, let's go on and go kill Capra now. Capra Demon is a tricky boss fight, but there is a very key thing to it. That is... Your shield. It's all about your shield. If you have a shield with enough stability, I'd say around 60 stability is what uh, you would be aiming for, then Capra Demon becomes easy because you can block his uh, jump attacks that usually can uh, bypass your shield. As long as you have a good shield, I have one of the better shields in the game by the way, medium shields it is. Hey, that's not nice of you. Uh, as long as you have a decent shield, then the fight will be really easy for you. The second tricky part is Capra is not alone. He is accompanied, accompanied, uh, my English, uh, by two guard dogs or uh, hollow dogs or whatever you want to call them. That's why I bought the charcoal pine resin. You can use one of these charcoal pine resins. Oh my God, the noise here is huge. Uh, to imbue your weapon with fire damage and you can one-shot them quite easily at that point. But you know, generally speaking, it's a tricky boss fight but there are some tricks that make it easier for you. I didn't lock onto him, I uh, dead-angled him, he could not repose me there, even if he was in his animation. Anyway, or rather his pose. Uh, there are the two dogs here. You will not uh, trigger the rogues, or rather the thieves, down the road if you're staying here. I need to be careful now. This dog can be quite pesky. I don't want to die. There we go. I don't want to die! That's what Lauren says right now. Right, we're gonna use our charcoal pine resin and we're gonna go inside. Alright. Let's go full Star Wars mode. So that attack is the most dangerous. You can go a bit forward and then backward. Oh, ow. You got me there, bro. Oh, dog. No, no. That attack. That is the most dangerous one. If you have enough stability with a shield, that attack is no problem. With the two dogs dead, this fight is trivial, really. He doesn't have a lot of health. You can teach a bit about dodging his abilities. He has a lot of time. You have a lot of time to attack him when he's done swinging, by the way. So, swing one, swing twice, swing yourself, roll off. Okay, I wasn't blocking there, but it doesn't really matter. There's a single swing. If you can dodge it, attack. If not, don't attack. One swing, two swings, three swings. single one, I didn't manage to evade it. I blocked it, but I, it staggers me, it uh, burns a lot of stamina. That, those two attacks, the jumping attack, this one, and the uh, 
a double bladed attack is are the most dangerous that Capra does. But overall, as I said, after the dogs are gone, it's a trivial fight. Okay, once jump attack. Yeah, my my shield can block that. Normally, you might not be able to. But, okay, this attack is pesky, I uh, was out of stamina there, has actually a lot of range to it, Ooh, he managed to dodge that, surprisingly enough, once, twice, dead, there we go, key to the depth cut. So yeah, basically be careful when he does that double swing, like when he uh, holds the two machetes together and swings once, that attack can uh, kill completely your uh, shield stability. And the second attack is of course his jump attack, that is the most dangerous attack. But as long as you move forward and make him do it, and then you roll twice backwards, you're safe from him. In general, it's a rather tricky boss fight because it's a small area. It's basically unlike any other boss in the game. He is accompanied by someone, and it's a small area. This is, this is more like Demon's Souls boss, really. It's more similar to those guys. But, you know, <clears throat> with a decent shield, you can do it. And again, I want to emphasize, I do have a Black Knight shield, but it's unupgraded. So, the stability is just about as basic as any other shield graded to plus 5, which by now you could have, thanks to Andre. And if you didn't get to Andre, then it's your own damn fault. That's my point. Anyway, uh, most of the initial part of depth will be these guys, but we're not gonna stay here forever. We're actually gonna homeward bone back to Fireling after a certain point. But I wanna do something, and I wanna do it without dying. And in recent memory, I've died here a lot because I was really ballsy. Don't be ballsy, be calm, be gathering your thoughts. Don't do stuff too hastily, essentially. Oh, don't roll off. I would survive, of course, but it would kind of ruin the strats of the whole place. Essentially, the torch hollows are the more dangerous ones. Oh, that guy thought he could sneak on me. Okay, down here, straight here, he's a dog. This is different than most dogs, they're more resistant than the other ones, they have more health. So, a normal swing, if you could kill them in one hit before, might not be enough this time around. I wonder, do I have anything that can be tossed? Um, oh, yes I do. Come here, doggy. go and butcher speculations about them being ladies about them not being ladies these guys or gals can have their attacks parried some of them not the hook attack though ow okay let's try it out I'm gonna drink the cestus there we go they can be parried, but if they swing their other weapon, their hook or their spike or whatever you want to call it, the meat hook, this one, this one cannot be parried and it's actually really painful because they can combo you to death. Well, not to death really or necessarily, but you know, it can do a lot of damage. This chest is very important, make sure to loot it. Large amber. Bring it to Andre and you can upgrade your weapons to plus 10 with large Titanite shards. You need 9 total. 9 small shards, 9 large ones, 7 chunks, 1 slab for up to plus 15 weapon. Oh no! Stupid of me. I timed that very wrong. Okay, let's not risk it here, shall we? Says the guy that just drinks an Estus very, very... Ugh. I don't think that is actually a parryable, by the way. The one attack where they do like a... Oh. Double attack, if you want to call it that. Most other attacks are, as long as it's the machete. And with this death, we should be getting the sack. Best helm in the game. Best helm in the game. And down here... 
Here, open, open here. Please, you must help me. Let's uh, do something first. We get additional dialogue if you do not free him. Okay, there you are. You must help me. Or else, she'll have me for lunch. You're my only hope. Oh, please. You're my only hope. Reference to Star Wars, perhaps. Thank you. I would have been a supper without you. Been in the line. I shudder to think. Thank you. Thank you dearly. I am Laurentius. For the great one. I will not forget my debt to you. There we go. There isn't much else that needs to be said here. Uh, her! Her! He defines it someone as a she. Who is that? Uh, by the way, this place slows you down because it's uh, deeper water. You w don't wanna even look at those dogs. They normally don't draw aggro at you. You can go through without even fighting them. Don't, no, ne not necessary, really. It's unnecessary. By the way, secret here. Uh, who is she? Well, he could be calling a she the butchers, but the other theory is that she is uh, the little mousy over here. Hello, bro. Considering that the butchers are sending lots of bodies down this place, uh, her supper might be intended as a rat. And guess who leads the rat in the sewers? We'll figure it out. Spider shield, by the way. That's a thing. We're gonna use our penultimate Estus use here. By the way, it's not multiple Estus flasks. It's just multiple uses of an Estus flask. It's always the same flask. You know, it's not like... You can plunge this rat to death with a decent weapon in a single hit. Otherwise, you have a nasty fight ahead of you. It always drops a humanity and important always loot the sewer chamber key. Always. Do not forget about the sewer chamber key. Now uh, also important to note the rat ha is actually blinded in one eye by an axe, a battle axe. Considering there is a spider shield over here it is possible that a brigand or a bandit, as the case might be, has been around here. Now follow this path down here, go to the first left Humanity, nice. We actually got a soft humanity out of some place. Sometimes undead uh, hollows will give you that randomly. After you kill this, take the right and then the left. This is the safest path, otherwise there are actually holes in the wall. There are bigger rats here. You wanna try to... Ow. Not do that. There is actually a channeler there. Who's gonna buff the, rat buff the rats, by the way. Wanna be very careful about these guys, they're pesky. Alright. Uh, down in this corner you're safe, but these rats are buffed. This is the channeler I was talking about I earlier. He can buff a boss. You wanna take care of him before you go deeper into the depths. Okay. These rats have been taken care of. Oh. Be careful. Not like a pro. Be careful now. Uh, there are rats here. Try not to get hit. The channeler also gets a buff and he can actually hit very hard. He's buffing. He's dead. Alright. This is very important that you do it. It's very important that you kill this channeler if you wanna take on the boss of this area. He dropped a humanity, so... Rats always drop humanity if there is any drop. The official way would be through this fog gate. You can go from the other side. That's actually the easier way to take care of this channeler. But, this is the safer way. As in, uh, you do not risk falling down a hole and entering a basilisk area. Around this corner, very important, is a large tide night chart. Make sure to do this. At this point... I will use a homeward bone, which I have not equipped. To return to Firelink quickly, I'm gonna go to Andre, and uh, we're gonna go back to the depths, to another entrance. And here we are, 
It's also important to note, do not rest at the bonfire here in the parish, unless if you want to have a longer walk. Just walk over here, deliver the things that you have to do, and go back with a homeward bone. Ah, why, that's a fine ember you have there. I could smith some mighty weapons with one of those. Why not lend it to me? We will indeed lend it to him. Magnificent! You won't be disappointed. I can hardly wait to get started. There we go. And now we can modify our claimer to plus six. We could upgrade our spider shield, but no, no. We actually have three large titanite shards. I think one of the twinkling... Uh, Lizards drop more, so that's actually really lucky. We can do this, and then we can reinforce weapon further. We can actually reinforce our shield, but we're not gonna do it right now. We can reinforce it to plus seven. This is already a very powerful weapon now. There's a huge difference between us plus... Uh, by the way, this is the statistics for plus eight, but... There's a huge difference between plus five and plus seven, trust me on that. Every time you ascend, there is a huge, huge difference in quality of the weapon. Next, we're gonna purchase, very important here, weapon smith box and a repair box. As I said, I will skip the armor smith box for now. And there isn't anything else that I'd like to buy as far as I'm concerned. So I'm gonna go back to Firelink and we're gonna have some dialogues. So, down here, at this point, after beating Capra Demon, these guys will come in. Like, he was already here, Petrus of Torlun was already here, but Rhea, or Rhea, and uh, her bodyguards weren't, so let's talk to him. Hello there. I believe we are not acquainted. I am Petrus of Thorolund. Have you business with us? If not, I prefer to keep a distance, if possible. Let's talk further. Hello there. I realize that I have requested that we retain our distance. But I also want you to know that it is not meant in ill will. Here, take this as a token of peace. No, go ahead. It's for you. Korkain. Oh, hello. My guests have finally arrived. I will be departing with them shortly. So, I'm afraid I will be saying goodbye soon. It was a pleasure. And further? Oh, hello. Miracles, I presume? Yes, I know. There we go. He actually lets you enter the Covenant Way of White. We might as well do it. Uh, we are not in any Covenant. And the Way of White doesn't have any penalty for leaving it. And furthermore, it has the uh, effect... It affects your connection rate. So you will not get invaded as much, I believe. And you will be easier to be summonable or be summoned or... Not summonable or be summoned, but rather to summon other people into your world. Learn gesture, shrug, might as well. Uh, he sells some miracles for an insane amount of souls, by the way. Uh, we could buy heal, but no, we're not. He sells the Thorland Talisman, which is good for uh, low faith spells. Uh, it's expensive, but if you have a, a minimalistic level of faith, this is gonna be good, it's gonna not gonna scale at all actually with fate, so this is a good call. Or a normal talisman, which is the way to go if you have more faith later on. There is a canvas talisman as a cleric star that is even better. We're gonna leave this guy. Come again. The effectiveness of the teachings depend upon your faith. Alright, let's talk to Rhea. You are undead as well. Then we've no time to fraternize. I have my mission, and you, no doubt, have yours. We must not let this curse overcome us. That's all she's gonna tell us, really. So yeah, she has a mission, her bodyguards are there to protect her, Petrus is part of that bodyguard. At least there are more to Petrus, I believe you can now talk to Lotrek, and he's gonna have some information for us. Slipping, but there are methods. Most fools have more humanity than they know what to do with. Now, who do you imagine will make the best use of it? Probably those that uh, use it to invade other people and steal humanity. Well, where have you been? I'm glad to see you're safe. 
Have you heard of Trusty Patches? If ever a man has rubbed me up the wrong way, <laughs> if he ever comes around again, I swear I'll have his hide. All right. Uh, read message. I don't care. You again? What is it? Our futures are murky. Let's not be too friendly now. I wonder if that he does actually sell the. Our future. Now and apparently, uh, probably, yeah. I, I think they have to leave first for him to sell information. But he will sell some information about Petrus later on. Why? What a surprise! I didn't expect you to make it. Oh, somebody rang the bell. Wait, was it you? You never give up, do you? I don't know how you do it. Well, don't stop now. Only one more. But it's going to be suicide. <laughs> Before we do this, we're going to talk to him through. Did you see her? That virtuous little maid, complete with followers in tow. They're probably going straight to pillage graves. I've heard enough about the lady for a lifetime. Alright, and further down. What's wrong? Get a bit of a scare out there. No problem. Have a seat and get comfortable. We'll both be hollow before you know it. <laughs> well, what are you going to do? I've already decided I don't really care. I'm simply crestfallen. Yep, he doesn't give a damn care. How did that nutty sorcerer make it back? My doing. Unexpected. But I suppose stranger things have happened. Okay, further. How did that old man make it back? Unexpected. But I suppose stranger uh, I have no idea who he talks about when he says old man. Mm -hmm. What now? I'm not up for chatting. Leave me alone. A bit of a shame that we're not gonna get any more dialogues, but let's just say that once we return from the trip that we're about to make, he's not gonna talk a lot more, so that's a shame. But what can we do about it? So I'm gonna now cut a bit and we're gonna be back into the depths. And we're back where we killed the rat. Now I'm gonna use an Estus Flask for the hell that I lost on the way. And here is the best path to take care of the depths really quickly. Get down here, slide down. Make sure to embrace the left side, otherwise you're gonna fall off. And here you go. Uh, this is actually an interesting area. There's some enemies, there's some slime enemies. There's some rats, but here I'm gonna tell you something. If you're a human, even even in case, just in case, to tell you. If you're human, uh, there is gonna be an NPC invader in the depths. The first NPC invasion you're gonna have in this game. And this happens here. He, he gets summoned right where I'm standing at right now. But he will start being summoned the moment you step here, I believe. Don't go further, otherwise you're gonna aggro that basilisk. Stand here. Uh, hold on to a homeward bone to see if it grays out. If it grays out, run back here and uh, he should be here before he gets summoned. The moment he gets summoned, you can just tap him in the back. And now, for the more important part, is to reach the bonfire. If you got that sewer key that I told you to take before, don't even give a goddamn care about those slimes. Slide down here, then take these stairs. The key is going to open this door here. I don't think you can open it from the other side. This door, or no, not this one, sorry. The other door. This door cannot be opened from the other side, though, so this is important to note. Uh, this door should be opened. The bonfire door should be opened with that key. So it's strongly suggested that you do this path. There we go. There we go. There is the bonfire. This is your harbor of safety. Right over here. Let's, I'm gonna rest, I'm gonna level up, I'm going to reverse my humanity, and I'm gonna cut until that NPC invasion happens. Be right back. Okay, here we go. Look carefully. 
Homeward Bone blackens out. Run back here. Wait for him. Wait for him. Surprise backstab! <laughs> you know, I would be more sporty if it was an actual player, but it's just an NPC. You might as well cheese the fuck out of him. Alright. And now we can go fight the boss real quick. I don't think there should be any other invasion. He didn't drop anything. So that's unfortunate. He can drop his sword early on. He can drop his shield early on. But it's not 100% chance. For this boss you can summon both Solaire and uh, Lotrek. I strongly advise to not summon anyone. Simply put. Uh, Solaire's sign is here. You can summon Solaire and actually not compromise the boss's health and Lotrek is that one. Uh, you can get a heavy crossbow over here, so if you're in a PvE co-op situation you can actually uh, have the player go down there and uh, fight off the boss while you stand up here and shoot him with the crossbow bolts. We're gonna summon Solaire, just for the sake of it. This is not actually something that helps the fight at all. Summons do not help this fight. He's a cute little alligator man. Who's a cute little alligator? Oh! Oh, he's a bit bigger. Tiny little bit bigger. There we go. The gaping dragon. Yep, puns probably intended. As I said, dragons have more paws. Dragons have four wings. It's important that you do that, and after a couple of swings, you should get the fuck out of there and stay on the side. You can do this fight without getting hit once. Once he does his movement, go back to his tail, swing your sword at the tail, get the heck out of here. Slayer's gonna get his ass murdered, by the way, if he doesn't. Okay, he's gonna drop down, run towards the head. Try making a sprinting attack. Do a couple of swings. Do not risk more than a couple of swings. Run around the side, rinse and repeat essentially. You can cut off his tail. I'll try, but no guarantees. I should move out because he can actually tail swipe the fuck out of you. He's instead gonna draw aggro from Solaire. This is actually a very pesky attack, so try not to stay too close to him. Always keep your distance, that's why Solaire will get killed. The paw, the hand thing, swipe, is dangerous. Oh, that's his vomit attack. Stick as far away as possible from that. He's probably gonna hit me with it. No, barely not. Okay. Fair enough. Solaire is actually drawing its attention towards me. That is also dangerous. That's why Solaire is not useful. I'm telling you guys. He's just gonna kill the pattern. Okay. I'm not gonna go back to the head. I'm just gonna wait for him to move forward. He didn't move forward. Okay, never mind. Oh, he ate Solaire. Hi, Solaire. See ya. <laughs> yeah, he's probably dead now. And good riddance, too. Like, when he dies, the fight is gonna probably be easier. Oh, yeah. Cast those Sunlight Spears right now, bro. Not gonna do anything more than this, really, because this could be risky. He's going to move forward. I'll move back to his tail and try to cut it off. Oh, I missed. Ah, oh, there we go. Dragon King Great Axe, awesome. You have you have to be patient and get a couple of hits. He's gonna do that. I'll run in. Do one swing because I was a bit delayed there. You should not risk this fight, like. He can easily one-shot you, but his attacks are very predictable. Uh, okay, I missed there, but it's just a bit of a delay, so I'm not sure. Also, make, make sure to not fall off the edge there. And when he's starting to fly, just... Whoa! I wasn't expecting that much damage. I'll give you that. So yeah, as I said... He can really easily one-shot you, one-shoot you, but 
his only attack that is dangerous is really that fly attack. Swing one, swing twice. Rapidly on the side before he actually paws you. The paws are dangerous when he moves around. Swing once, swing twice. Swing thrice. Back. Next attack is his death for sure, but again, rather not risking it. If you stand nicely forward, he should queue up his head, head slam attack, but not always. There we go. That's his death. Bam! So I almost died there, foolishly so, because I didn't move to, uh, quickly enough and far away enough from his uh, head slam attack, or rather his flight attack. Usually you want to keep distance with him, and once he does an attack, once he uh, predicts an attack, you just go ham a couple of hits and then take your distance again. Do not risk this fight, it's an easy fight, you just don't risk it, okay? I was very foolish there, but I managed to survive, so that's lucky enough. Okay, defeated the gaping dragon, we can now go to Blight Town. We got a key, we can read its description, uh, there we go. Key to Blight Town from the depths of the undead berg, swallowed by the, the gaping dragon. Yuck. Wait a second, there's a bit of gear that I forgot. As its name suggests, Blight Town is a place of great pestilence, even the polluted inhabitants of the depths are aware of its dangers and built this mighty door in hopes that they could remain safely separated. So yeah. Did I loot? Oh, I did loot the armor. The warrior armor. Never mind. Stupid of me. So yeah, Blight Town. If Capra Demon is not the bane, if before that the gargles are not the bane of newcomers, if there isn't any such thing as a bane of newcomers, then Blight Town is the bane to all. There is no such thing as tricky as Blight Town. Blight Town is quite a mess. Also, there's the rat. Down here is Domnal. Hello. I shall I have a good day to you. I'm Domnal of Zena. I'm just a pet nurse. I adore trinkets and oddities, so I trade for them. He talks fast, he gets straight to the point. Love this guy. He sells free gold pine resins, might as well buy it. I don't have a bottomless box, might as well buy it. He sells crystal straight sword, crystal great swords, uh, crystal shield. These weapons are very damaging, but once they're broken, they're gone forever. Uh, they probably put them here as means of doing more damage for the next sections, really, if you don't have an upgraded weapon. And he also sells his armor, which is actually good, but cannot be upgraded, so be wary of that. It's also rather heavy, so we're not gonna buy it. Hmm. Well, I'm certain we will make a good trade of everybody, so I am willing to share some tips. If you see kindling in the catacombs, use divine weapons. That will repair the reassembling skeletons. See? Hmm. Well, I'm certain we so I am willing to share. The cursed ghosts of New Londo are formidable foes. To face them, you will require special arms or a cursed body. The quickest way to be cursed? Try the bug-eyed lizards in the sewer. Desperate measures, to be sure. He actually offers lots of tips about the uh, area surrounding Firelink Shrine, so if you're ever in doubt, talk to this guy. Thank you. That was a fine trade. I have this funny feeling we'll meet again soon. Can you make another fine trade, of course? So, he's actually a very important merchant. Uh, he'll sell boss armors once you defeat a certain boss. And after you ring both Bells of Awakening, he's gonna move to below the aqueduct in Firelink Shrine. You'll have to make that risky jump every time to talk to him, but he's gonna sell good stuff, so I strongly suggest to do that. He's also going to sell the uh, um, Master Key. The, the Master Key is the, is the name? Yeah, the Master Key. Uh, once you've... by the way, Blight Town. Oh, shit! Don't do that, guys. That? No. That's not good. <laughs> Blight Town, round two, baby. Okay, so these guys, they're barbarians. They are slow, they're very healthy, but you can use the same advantage that they have against them. There's two more. We're gonna trigger one of them. Now, we're in a bit of a safer spot. 
So I'm gonna try to repost him the way I failed the first time around. I failed there. Their attacks are rather easy to predict, but let's just say that the commentary has its toll on my reposting skills. Or rather, my parrying skills. Oh my god. Oh my god, stop it! Stop it, you're a bad bad! Also, each swing builds up your poison level, so be careful about that. Uh, there is another one. He, they drop dunk pies as well as their clubs. So if you want their clubs farmed, their large club, club. It's a really good strength scaling weapon, by the way, so if you want it, you know where to get it. It's just a bit hard. It's a rare drop from them. Oh god, the lag. I see them coming. And I missed. By the way, the way the, the reason why I don't get uh, poise broken is because of my uh, ring. But, you know. I try to be concentrating here. This area is a bit tricky. Not too tricky, though. If you know where to go, it's not tricky. Just don't die like I did. Alright, this guy is being dead. There are uh, these swamp people here that you want to take care of. Possibly one of the time, but I believe these two guys take aggro together. They have a grab movement. You don't want to get caught in that. And they're flanking the Pachisas out of me. So note, notice that there will be some darts being tossed at me later on. We don't want to get hit. That, that is the grab attack. The one where they go like, that, that one. Whoop. Don't get grabbed by that. You can easily break, poise them, poise break them, but still. Oh, the dark Rover is tossing darts at me, isn't he? Yep, there they are. This is the more tricky part of Blight Town. Uh, these guys. These guys will toxify your ass. They die easily, they have about 100 health, but... And they do not respawn on top of that, but you know, you need to be careful. Down here, we're gonna loot some uh, soul, I believe. You're not gonna grab me, instead I'll stab your ass. I'm not sure whether you can... Uh, repose them. I've never tried, to be completely honest with you. We could try, but they do not really use a weapon that you can loot, I suppose. They use broken swords, I suppose, but I'm not sure. I've never tried to repose them, or rather to parry them, simply. Considering you can stab them, there might be a chance you can repose them. That's my logic anyway. Like anything that is stabbable is likely to be repostable as long as it's humanoid. That means that excludes the boar, of course. But you know. Uh, I'm gonna pause this really quickly. There's a bonfire just upcoming, but I wanna reach that first and then we can pause it. There's two blue ways here. Do not go across that. That is a moving bridge, like it starts wiggling around. You don't like that. No one likes that. I could try and... Mystery solved! You can repose them. <laughs> okay, good enough. Uh, the way around that bridge is simply going here. There is actually a dangerous jump you can take to get a very nice weapon. A very nice dexterity scaling weapon, the Yaito. Um, it's a katana weapon. I'm gonna show you the location right now. But I strongly suggest you not doing it the first time around in Blight Town. Here. You have to sprint and take the jump here. There is a bonfire down there. I suggest you take that bonfire first and return up here if you wanna take the Yaito. Also, there should be a nice armor down here. Sorry if the frame rate drops, let's just say Blight Town plus recording. There we go. The ninja armor, the shadow garbs. And then we take the ladder down. Actually, there should be a loot down here if I drop here, right? Yeah. Soul of a Proud Knight. People just die here. Blight Town is not only bad and baneful to the player, it's bad and baneful to everyone. There's a drop here, a risky one, but I'm able to get it. And then you drop down here. Oh god, almost died there. And just move around here, and here is our bonfire. 
I might not be able to rest at it because, yeah, Mr. Dickwad here decided to come in and play. Luckily enough, they're actually very easy to predict and stun. Or rather, stab. There we go. Bonfire is available. Bam! Whew! Okay, that was actually exciting. Uh, the frame rate might be a bit bad in this zone, but we're gonna figure it out. I'll try to figure it out. I'm gonna level up a bit of vitality. Attunement can be okay at 10. There is a very specific item I'm gonna seek in this very specific place which is going to be used for my attunement. Not that I'm gonna be able to use it because I forgot to talk to Laurentius in Firelink because I'm an idiot. And we're gonna level up some strength and a bit more endurance. There we go. Level 29 for now, the Chosen. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching and join me next time as we're gonna go through the depths of Blighttown. Until then, by the way, down there is the depths of Blighttown. Firelink is just up there. Yes, there is a sky to Blight Town, believe it or not. That is the Great Hollow. That is the main entrance to the Great Hollow. Anyway, until next time, be well. Peace!